My name is David Diamond. Um, I helped co-found what used to be called Headlines Theatre in 1981. I became artistic director in 1984. The company is now called Theatre for Living. And Theatre for Living is a way of making theatre that grew out of Augusta Boal's Theatre of the Oppressed. Boal was a dear friend. I found it necessary to move away from that really strict binary model of oppressor and oppressed. So Theatre for Living embraces a more systemic approach, um, recognizing that everything really is connected to everything else. Headlines Theatre started off doing agitprop, agitation propaganda theatre. It started in 1981. Uh, we were a group of writers and actors and directors who were frustrated with the kind of work we were doing. We wanted to do something that had meaning. The house next door to where I was renting, big these are big, big houses uh, on the west side of Vancouver, sold for $350,000 and we thought the world was ending. That house is worth, I don't know, $5 million today. And so we did a play on organizing for affordable housing, on the housing crisis as we saw it, called Buy Buy Vancouver, B-U-Y as in purchase. It was a review, it got rewritten every day based on what was happening in the news, it was angry, it had music in it, it was also funny. It played in a different place every night, you had to really work to find it. And it turned into this cult hit. We were totally unprepared. We didn't know we were starting a theater company. It led to another project. Uh, Nettie Wild, who I founded the company with, uh, was already moving into documentary film. We did a video documentary on organizing for affordable housing called Right to Fight. It screened in many parts around the world, won some awards. I screened it through the Squatters Network in uh, Amsterdam and Berlin. Really exciting times. And then we were approached by Project Plowshares, a church-based uh, disarmament group to do a piece that turned into Under the Gun on Militarism, toured all across the country. During these years, I was becoming the guy who was raising the money, booking the tours, and then also helping write and perform the plays. And I was having to make really tiny decisions on a daily basis because I was doing this. And then coming to a collective once a month and going, boom, 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 this and this and this, and the collective, all wonderful people, were going, yes, but what about this? And what about that? And I couldn't function. It just wasn't working that for me that way. And I went back to the collective and I said, look, there are two options for me. One is that the collective come back together and we do this work together. Or the other is I need decision-making power. And life being what it is, People didn't want to do that work. And so they said, you're doing great, take it. This was not my first choice. Um, but I think I knew there was something important here. This thing that was, it was just being born. And so um, I had by this time met some people who were working in, in Britain in particular and managed to navigate some invitations to go to Britain to investigate political theater. I had a question inside me. We'd been really good at this agitprop thing. We would decide what the issue was going to be. We would go out and interview people who were living the issue. And then we'd lock ourselves in a room, pretend we were them, and write a play for them, about them. And because maybe we were young and we thought we knew everything, we'd also tell them how to fix the problem. Agitation propaganda theater. I wanted to know if it was possible to do it with them, not for them and at them. And so this is the reason I went to the UK. Before leaving, I walked into Octopus Books on Commercial Drive and um, I wanted something to read. I picked up this book by this guy I'd never heard of before, Paolo Freire, and his Pedagogy of the Oppressed. 
Uh, for people who don't know Freire, a Brazilian educator, his work really transformed people's ideas about education. I didn't know what I was picking up. So I'm work traveling through uh, uh, the UK and this book is blowing my mind because it's actually answering my questions about how to work legitimately and honorably with communities. And then I got to Manchester at a, a, a theater and education uh, conference and this guy, Chris Vine, who's now in New York and became a dear friend, is doing a demonstration of this thing called Forum Theater by this guy, Augusto Boal, from Brazil. And I'm sitting in the audience going, holy shit, that is what I'm reading about in this book. And Boal, who'd been arrested and tortured in Brazil for his theater work, was now in France, in Paris. And so he was offering a skills sharing workshop in Paris in a few weeks. And so I met Boal for the first time in this 10 day workshop and he and I hit it off. Um, my only way to explain that is that I was already working in theater. And so there was just something, we just recognized each other. Uh, and his work had a profound effect, as did Freire's, of course, on the direction that my work took. And so I came back after that 10 days with all these notes and kind of was on fire about theater of the oppressed. Didn't quite know what to do with it. Um, there were other projects I was you know, working on, but I knew there was something important here. And so I pulled a group of friends together uh, rented a hall. They gave me three days. And it wasn't for them, it was for me. I had my notes and I'd go, uh, like with games and exercises, and go, uh, do this and do, uh, and it would just fall apart. And I, and, and I needed to try to figure out if I could run some of these games and exercises. They were very generous with me. And they were beautiful games and exercises. And they they created a sense of, us being in the room together, investigating something together. It was pretty profound. And so then, just because my brain works this way, I worked something out on paper, uh, a five-day process, theoretical process, that would take a group of people from zero to performing plays using this language of the theater of the oppressed. I called it a power play. And I didn't know if it would work. But the theater company, we already had a touring circuit. And so I got in touch with people who'd uh, hosted um, Under the Gun when it toured, the, our play on militarism, and explained that I had this new thing and I didn't know if it would work, that this was an experiment. But would they host a five-day workshop that went to a little public performance. And seven communities said yes all across BC. And um, Kevin Finnan, who we'd met in the workshop with Augusto, he's since become a very big choreographer in the UK, a dear friend. We did this tour together. I didn't want to do it alone. And um, I got this work under my belt. And this idea, this structure that I put on paper that I called a power play actually worked. And it's been honed and adapted, of course, over many, many years now. But it formed the, the basis, the core, the foundation of my own knowledge of taking a group of people to performance.